Around this time, artists started getting vocal about their issues with Birdman, and this included BG. Even though Birdman was doing a good job selling records and making these artists celebrities, there were concerns about how he was handling the financials. BG was pretty vocal about this. For example, when they went on the Cash Money Rough Riders tour, BG felt the payout seemed fishy. According to BG, they were selling out every show and Birdman was making $165,000 per show. The tour ended up grossing $14 million and of that, BG only saw $300,000. Now I just want to say when it comes to the finances, this is BG's side of the story. Yes, the tour could have grossed 14 million, but we all know profit and revenue are two very different things. And we just don't have a breakdown of how the money was split to confirm who was right or wrong in this situation. Regardless, BG felt betrayed. You have to remember once BG started popping, most of Cash Money's previous artists either passed away or fell out with Birdman. There was a lot of pressure on BG and DJ Manny Fresh to make hits and hold the label down. And BG did his job. He just felt like years later, Birdman wasn't holding down his end of the deal. I just need Baby to know one thing. Baby. You know I love you like a father, you hear me? You know what I'm saying? I looked up to you. I went against my family for you at time. You know what I'm saying? You turned your back on you know, man, real respect that you hear me god don't like ugly you always talking that god you know what i'm saying but man you'll be personal you know what i'm saying because you know the kind of relationship we had you hear me so just know one thing you know what i'm saying every dog had a day you hear me you gonna get your in a minute then i'm gonna make it where he ain't gonna be able to come back to new orleans baby straighten that shower with bg i love you man y'all got your names tattooed on each other you you, you know how deep it is you can't tell me that you can't lay down at night and not think of BG. Straighten that business out with your brother, man. Get your brother straight. That's all I want to say to you. That's all I want to say to you, baby. Get BG straight, dog. You know, would, would Cash Money be universal without BG? Maybe, maybe not. But that was one of them brothers that helped you build your empire. You can't leave him back. BG was at somewhat of a crossroad. Yes, he could go start his own label, but Cash Money was on a strong run selling records and going on tour. They also did a good job leading him to stardom. The downside of staying with Cash Money was having to deal with what he saw as shady accounting on Birdman's end. Ultimately, BG ended up going with the former option, starting his own label, Chopper City Records. He also didn't anticipate Cash Money doing well once he left as he felt he was the main attraction for the label and that the streets were going to side with him. He would also release his next album, Live in Legend, on his own label. Now in the case of the other Hot Boys, Juvenile and Turk would also leave the label over financial concerns, but Lil Wayne actually stayed. And you, oh, it turned out yeah. to be real fucked up, but is it like some fucked up family shit? It's fucked up to the point right now, you know what I'm saying? Like I see, I got the streets behind me. Once I left Cash Money, the streets left Cash Money. You know what I'm saying? You know the streets rooting for the underdog, and I'm the underdog. You know what I'm saying? They don't expect like me to shake back. You know what I'm saying? So. One thing about BG is no matter his label situation, he was consistent. While his next few albums didn't sell as well as the albums on Cash Money due to the fact that he didn't have as much of a push, they were still pretty well received. Over the next few years, he would release the albums Life After Cash Money and Heart of the Streets Volume 1 and 2. These are albums that many would argue are underground southern classics. Remember earlier in the story when I mentioned BG held down Cash Money in the late 90s? Well, this time, after BG left, Wayne would hold it down for cash money in the 2000s while BG released his music independently. You have to remember, BG had no issues with the other members. It was Birdman who dealt with his money at the end of the day. Lil Wayne put out a record called I Miss My Dogs off the Carter in 2004, which talked about how much Wayne missed all the old cash money members, and BG respected it. However, as time passed, Wayne would start doing interviews where he would take shots at BG, Juvenile, and Turk for leaving Cash Money. And of course, BG wasn't too happy with that. Y'all know just last year, they had this song out called I Miss My Dogs, you know what I'm saying? And that song right there meant so much to me, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that song there, like, really meant so much to me, you know what I'm saying? Because sure, they came from the hole with that song, you know what I'm saying? And, and I respected them for that, you know what I'm saying? But then recently, I picked up this magazine, and it was like, well, Lil Wayne, how you feel about everybody leaving cash money and you the only one on cash money? That nigga said, man, f 
Everybody who left Cash Money, I don't respect none of them. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I had to read it again. I had to read it again. I read the shit. It was like, how you feel that you still on Cash Money and everybody left Cash Money? You know what I'm saying? That nigga said, man, fuck everybody who left Cash Money. I don't respect none of them. You hear me? Now, I'm one of them niggas who left Cash Money. You know what I'm saying? So, I can see if he'd have said, well, you know, fuck Juve. I don't fuck with Juve because of this. Or, uh, Fresh left. I don't fuck with Fresh because of this. Or, uh, you know, PG, how you would have said, fuck everybody who left, I don't respect none of them, man. So if you say, fuck me, I ain't got no chairs but to say, fuck you back. You hear me? BG and Wayne's relationship was basically ruined at this point, and they would continue to diss each other on wax, which for you non hip hop heads means dissing each other lyrically on records. BG would also form a group called the Chopper City Boys, which consisted of himself, Hot Kizzle, Garn Snipe, as well as VL Mike. While the group did see some commercial success when they released their album We Got This in 2007, it wasn't necessarily comparable to the success of the Hot Boys. By the late 2000s, things were fairly steady for BG. While he wasn't a Billboard top charting rapper anymore, he was releasing projects through his own label and still getting booked for shows. At this point of the story in the late 2000s, you have to remember that when BG left 10 years prior, he thought cash and money wouldn't last. However, things went very differently and Lil Wayne was at the prime of his career at this point being arguably the biggest artist in the world. In 2009, there were talks of a hot boy reunion, and Cash Money also recently picked up their future stars Drake, Tyga, and Nicki Minaj. The reunion didn't end up happening, but BG and Turk did end up making an appearance at a Wayne concert. BG would also sign to TI's Grand Hustle Records for a short period of time, but it didn't end up working out. 